What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Friday edition of The Squeeze. I am Tyler Conium. T-G-I-F. It is Friday. Happy Friday. It was a one and two day yesterday. Bit of an interesting day. Uh, in baseball, we had the Jays to be leading after the first five. They weren't. They lost to Cleveland yesterday. Baltimore, who hasn't been swept in something like 78 straight series, do not get swept by Houston. We hit that bet. Again, that was plus 100. I don't really understand that at all. And then we had Winnipeg Blue Bombers to be leading the Elks at half by seven. They were down by 12, and they came back and won that game. Edmonton, it was a hell of a football game. Edmonton, not so good. Winnipeg wins that. So a one and two day, down a unit, uh, so we're essentially even for the week. Three bests today across three different sports, which is very, very exciting. Before I get into that, just want to talk about the QR code on the screen or the first link in the description. Use that code, use that link, sign up for a sports book, make a minimum deposit or more, and you're guaranteed the best exclusive bonuses and offers thanks to my partnership with Betstamp and with these books. So if you were to sign up for these on your own, you would get a bonus, but it wouldn't be as good as the one you'd get if you use these links. So if you're thinking about signing up for a new book, go ahead and do that with that link below there. You can also hop in the Discord channel that's linked in the description as well, where I post um, the pics early, post video first, everything gets posted there first, and also other places throughout the day and just want to create a community and a general discussion there okay let's begin with where are we starting today we're starting in the cfl we've got the montreal alouettes and the saskatchewan rough riders we've been doing very well in the cfl we didn't hit the bet yesterday but i've done very well betting the cfl this season nfl's around the corner so let's get the cfl bets in when we can I like the Alouettes to cover here. It's minus five. This is minus 110 at DraftKings. Now, it's an interestingly short line considering this game is in Montreal. So the Alouettes are at home. They're four and three this season. They're coming off a 27-14 win against Hamilton. They now um, didn't start great against Hamilton, but they ended up coming back. They had an 18-point fourth quarter, which is great. Um, Jason Moss and Cody Fajardo, um, you know, that's going to be an interesting storyline there with Fajardo going against his former team in Saskatchewan. Um and I think this is a really good spot for them. I always like quarterbacks going against back against their former team who got rid of them uh, to see how they play against them. Saskatchewan comes into this. They're 4-4. Four and four. They're coming off a win, but it was a 26-24, so a close win. That was against Ottawa. Um, you know, so this is going to be a bit interesting. All four wins that Saskatchewan has this season have been by no more than four points. So they're playing close games. And then you look at Montreal, who I just think is the better football team. Um Cody Fajardo has thrown for 10,000, sorry, he threw for over 10,000 yards, 48 touchdowns in three seasons with the Riders. He was dumped um, so they could go with Trevor Harris this offseason. So that's a very interesting storyline, and I put a lot of stock into that. He is a game-time decision with a shoulder injury. He's expected to play. Um, but look, Cody Fajardo is going to want to show Saskatchewan exactly what they're missing. He's going to want to show them that they're the better football team, that they've got a better record than Saskatchewan, and they're going to win. That's the biggest storyline going into this is definitely the revenge. Also with Montreal at home, they're a much better home team than they are on the road. I'm going to take the Montreal Alouettes here, minus 5 for minus 110 at DraftKings. Shifting to the WNBA, big spread. This is not a typo on the screen. I'm taking the Las Vegas Aces minus 17 points against the Washington Mystics. This is minus 110 at DraftKings. You might say, this is absolutely crazy. What are you thinking? What's going on? The Aces just came off a drumming last week to the New York Liberty. They lost by 30. They only scored 60 points. Like, I don't care. If anything, I think that that's perhaps a good thing. They got a little bit complacent. They're just demolishing everybody. They were 23 and two when they lost that game. They're now 24 and three, you know, Sunday's loss snapped an eight game winning streak, um, outscored Vegas 50 to 17 in the second half. I think it's just going to be the refresher that Vegas needed to go. Oh, okay. Well, we can't just put it on autopilot here, but listen to these stats. Offensive rating, number one, defensive rating, number one, net rating, number one, field goal percentage, Number one, they are the best team in the WNBA, and it's not even close. And then you look at the Washington Mystics. They split a two-game homestand against the Sparks. They're hovering around the 500 level. They are starting to get key members back on their team, such as Christy Tolliver, such as Ariel Atkins. 
they're all traveling, but we don't know if they're going to play. And I just think that the Las Vegas Aces are going to be able to put the hammer down. They are 16 and 12 against the spread this season. They're coming off, like I mentioned, they lost to New York, but then they beat Dallas by 20 in Dallas. They beat Atlanta by 21. They've beat Dallas before that by 13 points. So when you just look at, also, by the way, head-to-head, I mean, this is going to go back four years. But Vegas has covered the spread 10 times in a row against Washington. All 10 times they've covered the spread, whether they were, sometimes they were underdogs, sometimes they were favorites. 10-0 and ATS against the Washington Mystics. Washington, as I mentioned, is missing some key pieces. They just lost by 19 to Phoenix. Previous to that, they lost by 8 to L.A., the only time these teams or these teams have not played this season, last time they did it was actually a 10-point win for Washington, but that was last season, so I don't put too much stock into that. I think you're going to see a big win here by Vegas. This is in Las Vegas. I think they're going to realize, you know, we can't just put it on autopilot and expect to win these basketball games. We're starting to get closer to the end of the season. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the Aces minus a whopping 17 points, probably the largest spread that I've ever bet, minus 110 at DraftKings put it on the board and then our last bet of the day you're getting you can bet against the oakland athletics today for even money okay i know that it's the washington nationals i know the nationals are 50 and 66 but the oakland days are on the road and they're 33 and 82 they have 50 ish games left They're on pace to win like 45 baseball games this entire season. Uh, Washington has won the first two games, or sorry, they have not played this season. Going back to last year, they last played in uh, the end of last season, August and September, obviously interleague war. Washington won two of three games there. You look at Oakland in their last five, they're actually five and five. They're coming off a two nothing win against Texas. Do not think they're going to be able to win back-to-back games. Then when you look at Washington, they're poised for a victory. They just lost two straight games to the Philadelphia Phillies in a series in which they lost three of four. Previous to that, they'd won four straight games against the Cincinnati Reds and the Milwaukee Brewers. On the mound tonight for Oakland, yeah, okay, it's Paul Blackburn. He's 3-2 and two with a 2.80 ERA over his last five starts. He has won three straight of them which kind of feels like it's going to have to revert back to the norm. You have Joan Adon. 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 I apologize if I'm not saying his name correctly. He's going for Washington. It's only his third start. You could argue that maybe he's an opener. He went two innings in his first start against St. Louis, but he did go six innings his last time out. That was against Cincinnati. I think he's probably going to go a little bit longer here today again because he's playing against the awful, awful Oakland Athletics. And the Oakland Athletics are the, well, it's essentially a coin flip, but they're slightly favored in this game. I just, I don't see that happening. I think the fact that Oakland is coming off a win and Washington is coming off two losses, you know, you can probably throw a coin in the air and pick this one. But if I'm, anytime I'm getting around even money against the Oakland A's, I don't care who the team is. Like Washington's 16 games under 500, and they have 17 more wins than Oakland, you know? So give me the Washington Nationals straight up on the money line. That is minus 104 at FanDuel. Just a reminder, use that QR code on the screen or the link in the description. You can sign up for DraftKings or FanDuel, and you're guaranteed the best exclusive offers and bonuses at those links. Hop in the Discord. I've got more picks and props throughout the day as well. But your three bets for today, give me the Montreal Alouettes minus five. That's minus 110 at DraftKings. I'm taking the Las Vegas Aces to cover minus 17, minus 110 at DraftKings. And at FanDuel, give me the Washington Nationals on the money line for minus 104. As always, drop a comment if you're fading or following. You can follow me on various social media channels. Link in the description below for more picks and props throughout the day. And your audio is on Apple and on Spotify. Have a great Friday. Let's talk sports.